Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I came across this knife just a couple days ago on eBay. This is a knife made by Black Hill Steel. Now, for those not familiar, Black Hill Steel is a uh, frost brand. Uh, it's been around since, I think, around uh, 2000. 10 2011 somewhere around that time this particular knife though came out in 2012 i just happen to know that because of what knife this is and uh as you can see it's a scout knife which well we already know that because well it's got your uh can opener on this side it's got your cap lifter screwdriver over on this side all the blades also have the black hills steel um uh, stamp on there and then it has a punch on this side, also with the Black Hill Steel tank stamp. And then on this side, you see it says first production run. And uh, it's got the Black Hill Steel um, uh, stamp there for the shield too. I really like that shield, the oval shield. Now, the reason I know this came out in 2012 is because of the blade etch on the other side, which is from Smoky Mountain Knife Works Sharp Kids. And um, this series came out, it, the, the first production run knives were, these were the first scout knives that uh, Black Hill Steel made. And um, apparently SMKW bought quite a few of them in three different handle materials. This one is in the um, ROB. This is in the red-orange bone. It's really more just like an orange bone, but I guess it's got that reddish tint to it. Well, we can see here. No, it doesn't say it anywhere else. Uh, maybe here. Mirror polish finish, red-orange smooth bone handle. Uh, nickel silver bolsters, three and five eighths inch closed pocket knife. So got all the details that you need on the knife right there. In any case, um, for those not familiar, back in 2012, uh, Kevin Pipes launched a new program called Sharp Kids. Uh, and the idea was um, to get kids more interested in pocket knives. You know, because as he said, if if uh, if the children are not buying pocket knives, if kids are not buying pocket knives and using pocket knives, then the whole tradition dies. And so the idea was to have a program where um, like a father, son, mother, daughter kind of program to get kids more interested in pocket knives. So. The idea was to have knives designed for the program. And uh, it sounds like a pretty good idea. And, you know, I can understand why he was coming up with it. And he came out with these knives. And like I said, there's in three different bones. When the uh, series kicked off, I bought this one. This was the one I purchased. And this is in, uh, what did they call the bone? chipped rock this was the green chipped rock bone and to me it looks kind of gray but that's okay this is the green chipped rock bone and uh same blades obviously and first production run here and the sharp kids logo on the back side you will note that there are some scratches on the uh on the blade etch there and that was something that people, everyone complained about because uh, this knife also was probably never used. And it also has those nicks on it. But the, the knives were really being made with the sole intention of not collecting, but using. And that was the idea. Um, and there was also a third one, which was in blue chipped rock bone. So it looked like the gray, well, I'm sorry, the green but it was in a blue bone and the blue bone actually looks more blue than gray um this one definitely still looks green to me and it did not fade to this color it came that color and soon after these knives were uh, produced well there was criticism almost immediately because well first of all these knives were being sold on knives live tv 
that's where they were being sh shown through. I believe they also showed up in the catalog. But the biggest complaint that people had was, why are you using a Frost brand to promote a program for Smoky Mountain Knife Works? Why aren't you using the um, the Scout Knives that you already have in the Rough Rider line? Why are you using Black Hills Steel uh, knives when you could be using a Rough Rider knife? And uh, people said, all you have to do is switch out this um, this can opener if you want to or you could continue to use this can opener but use it for something else and uh and i was not the only one making that complaint uh, several people were making the complaint about that saying you could put a sharp kids um shield on there or you could put the sharp kids blade etch on one of these knives change out the bone use a different bone material in it uh, and while well, these knives are heftier, they're stronger, they're better built knives and everything else, why are we paying uh, the same price for a um, Black Hill Steel um, Scout knife when the Rough Rider knife is better? This is a, a better knife for the child to have. Um, so that was strike one against the program. The second strike against it was there's already kind of this um, program out there teaching young boys and also young girls how to use knives. You have the uh, Cub Scouts and you also had the Brownies and both of them have knife programs in them. So what is Sharp Kids offering that the Cub Scouts and the Brownies aren't offering? Um, and if the idea is to get children interested in um, in collecting knives, why are you leaning them towards a brand other than um, than something that is being made by Smoky Mountain Knife Works? So those were some of the negative things that came out when they chose the uh, Black Hill Steel knives. And then soon after uh, the Sharps Kids program was launched by Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They had a um, gathering at at the uh, store itself. They had a big gathering for Sharp Kids and uh, had the knives um, sold there at the store. And they also had a program teaching knife safety and so on and so forth at, uh, at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I was not there for that, so I'm not exactly sure all the uh, different things happening that day. But it was a day-long event that was really gear geared towards... Um, getting kids interested in uh, knives. And uh, I think the idea was ambitious. I also think it was a very smart idea, but it just didn't quite um, go as well as planned. And next year, when the next year rolled around, nothing really happened and people were actually, and people were actually asking, what happened to Sharp Kids? Um, is the program still happening or what? Because everyone was familiar with the first knives they picked up and they were looking for more knives uh, in the Sharp Kids uh, program. And uh, this was the only one that was ever made. Um, kind of unfortunate. I think it would not be a bad idea uh, for uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works to give it another go. Uh, but... If they do give it another go, I would say think about a knife that is going to appeal more to a younger child than the uh, than the camp knife. And you know how much I like camp knives. I really like camp knives, but I think they need to look at a knife that is going to be more geared towards today's use. Um, and also I would say you probably got something like that in the uh, Rough Rider line already. You don't need to go and look for something in a Frost line or some other line. Go for something that you already have in a house brand and make that program entirely a Smoky Mountain Knife Works youth program. And I'll be the first to say it. A knife like this in today's um, environment in, in, in the Western world is seen as something uh, vicious and naughty or, you know, something that you just can't trust a young kid with. And really, 
what needs to be done is young children need to learn the proper use of these kind of knives, these tools, and how to use them properly. Because um, just like every other tool in the toolbox, the hammer, the screwdriver, the pocket knife, these are things that children today are not getting taught to use. Parents are so afraid that their child might smash a finger or, or, or hit somebody with it or something like that. But if, and, and part of that is because the parents of the younger children these days were not taught to use the tools properly either. So we have this long disconnect of um, now the, we we failed to teach our children how to use a pocket knife or a hammer or something. And now it's down to those children. They have children now and they are terrified to use a pocket knife. So it's up to somebody uh, to actually show kids and even parents in some cases the proper use of a pocket knife, why you need a pocket knife, how handy they are just to have on you all the time. So you don't have to go looking for, you know, something else when you could take care of the problem at hand with a simple tool like a pocket knife. Uh, for many people these days, their first experience with something like a pocket knife is if they end up in the military or somewhere or the few people who still go through the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts or the uh, Brownies and the Girl Scouts. You know, in general, the use of a knife is not being taught from the adult to the child. And part of the reason is because the adult has not ever really used the pocket knife either. And they say, what do I need a pocket knife for? So it is really up to the knife community both the makers of knives and the people who are users and collectors of knives to get out there and pass the word on. Um, and I think it would be great if Smoky Mountain Knife Works would take another shot at sharp kids and maybe even sharp adults and get a program going for why you need a pocket knife and how to use it. Maybe they need an entire series on that as well. What follows is my original take on the Sharp Kids Scout Knife when it first uh, came out back in 2012. The Sharp Kids Camp Knife. Despite being new out of the box, the blade rub has already marred the Sharp Kids logo. The green chip bone appears to be field gray to me. It actually looks greener in this photo than in real life. For those where this is important, the knife is a global and it's made in China. It is actually a Black Hills knife brand. That's a Jim Frost knife brand. It even comes in the Black Hills box. I bought the green chipped rock camp knife. It has the Sharp Kids logo on the reverse side of the main blade and first production run on the front side of the main blade. Both are lightly etched. At first I thought it was a pad stamping. The knife has all the other markings of Frost Black Hills knife brand. Plain nickel silver bolsters, brass liners and pins, 440A stainless steel blades. It was razor sharp out of the box. The green chip rock bone looks great to me, but it's still quite pretty. The fit and finish is pretty nice and the overall build is very good for the price, $13. The frame is about 3 and 5 eighths inches overall. This is slightly shorter and slimmer than the Rough Rider and most of the older Scout knives I own. Scout knives are normally built on a 3 and 5 8 inch or 3 and 3 quarter inch cigar frame. The biggest disappointment is the blades. They are not nearly as thick as those you'll find on the Rough Rider camp knives. This means they will be more prone to breaking and probably will wear more quickly. I'm also not crazy about the bail. It is a bent piece of stainless steel instead of a more preferred heavy gauge wire. I knew this when I bought it. Of course, all this makes the knife lighter and less bulky than many of my other Scout knives, so it would be a more convenient pocket carry. Despite the negatives, it's a pretty decent knife and looks quite nice.
If you collect the pattern, you might as well toss $13 to SMKW for the first production run. Not to mention, it would make a fairly nice first knife for a youngster just starting to learn about knives and knife safety. Knife with Black Hills box, note the stamped metal bail. The key ring was added by me for display purposes. A burst side with first production run etch. Reverse side, note the marring of the etch due to factory blade rub. All the blades have the Black Hills tank stamp. For comparison, top left, Camillus Four Line USA, top right, Camillus made case scout knife, bottom left, sharp kids, bottom right, rough rider. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. really do appreciate your time here.